Hello students, welcome to Unit 8, Human Rights. Under the theme of Human Rights, we have three sections. A. Jamaican Fragment B. Once Upon a Time C. What is My Name Let us come to the face sheet. Here is a statement. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Dear children, do you know what are human rights? And what does this statement speak about? This unit human rights help us to recognize what are human rights? Why do we study human rights? Let me just make you understand the objective of studying this human rights. How do this help us? Human rights help us in recognizing the value and the dignity of people. And children, let me tell you, you know, having dignity, giving value to the people is one of the most required quality which one has to possess whether it may be your servant or may be your maid or anybody who comes in front of you you have to treat the person with dignity due dignity and respect you should not judge any person on his or her economic condition color caste or religion if you are doing so then you are violating human rights which is really you know is considered as a crime dear children once you watch this video Human rights. Human rights refer to the right of every person to live a dignified life without facing any discrimination on the basis of religion, gender, caste, race or country. Every individual gets human rights from birth. Neither the government nor any organization or individual has the authority to take away these rights. Human rights, the right to live means the right to live. A person can develop his personality only if he or she can think freely and has the freedom to express it. A religion based on one's choice is also very important. As a rightful citizen, an individual gets the political rights to vote and contest elections. He or she also gets an opportunity to participate in the affairs of the country. To arrest or detain anyone without a proper reason is considered against human right. It provides opportunities for development. Dear children, look at these pictures. I think you observed how the people of Jamaica, it is a land of colored and non-colored people. From this, I think you understood what we are going to learn. Dear children, our lesson, Jamaican Fragment, was written by A. L. Hendricks. He was a Jamaican poet, writer and broadcasting director, known as Mickey Hendricks in his broadcasting career. He was born in 1922 in Kingston, Jamaica to a Jamaican father and a French mother. He was particularly well known for his contributions to the Christian Science Monitor, the Daily Gleaner and Beam. He also contributed as a columnist and literary critic to the Daily Gleaner. He died in 1992 at the age of 69. Dear children, our lesson Jamaican Fragment is a small incident happened in the daily routine life of our author A. L. Hendrix. Let us watch this video, how beautifully he narrated that incident. Every day I walk a half mile from my home to the tramcar lines in the morning and from the lines to my home in the evening. The walk is pleasant. The road on either side is flanked by red and green roofed bungalows, green lawns and gardens. The exercise is good for me, and now and then I learn something from a little incident. 
One morning, about halfway between my front gate and the tram track, I noticed two little boys playing in the garden of one of the more modest cottages. They were both very little boys. One was four years old, perhaps, the other five. The bigger of the two was a sturdy youngster, very dark, with a mat of coarse hair on his head and coal-black eyes. He was definitely a little Jamaican, a strong little Jamaican. The other little fellow was smaller, but also sturdy. He was white, with hazel eyes and light brown hair. Both were dressed in blue shirts and khaki pants. They wore no shoes, and their feet were muddy. They were not conscious of my standing there watching them. They played on. The game, if it could be called a game, was not elaborate. The little white boy strode imperiously up and down, and every now and then shouted imperiously at his bigger playmate. The little brown boy shuffled along quietly behind him, and did what he was told. Pick up that stick. The dark boy picked it up. Jump into the flowers. The dark boy jumped. Get me some water. The dark boy ran inside. The white boy sat down on the lawn. I was amazed. Here, before my eyes, a white baby, for they were little more than babies, was imposing his will upon a little black boy. The little black boy submitted. I was puzzled as I went down the road. Could it be that the little dark boy was the son of a servant in the home and therefore had to do the white boy's bidding? No, they were obviously dressed alike. The little dark boy was of equal class with his playmate. No, they were playmates. The little dark boy was a neighbor's child. I was sure of that. Then how was it that he obeyed the white boy's orders so faithfully? Was it that even at this early age he sensed that in his own country he would be at the white man's beck and call? Could he in such youth divine a difference between himself and the white boy? Did the little white youngster, so young, such a baby, realize that he would grow to dominate the black man? Was there an indefinable quality in the white man that enabled his baby, smaller and younger than his playmate, to make him his slave? I could find no answer. I could not bring myself to believe such a thing, and yet, with my own eyes, I had seen a little dark boy take orders from a little white boy. A little white boy, obviously his social equal and younger and smaller. Were we, as a race, really inferior? so inferior that even in our infancy we realized our deficiencies and accepted a position as the white man's servant? For a whole day I puzzled over this problem. For a whole day my faith in my people was shaken. When I passed by that afternoon, the little boys were not there. That evening I thought deeply on the subject. The next morning, the boys were there again, and a man was standing at the gate watching them. I stopped and looked, just to see what the white boy was making his little servant do. To my utter astonishment, the little dark boy was striding imperiously up and down the lawn, while the white youngster walked abjectly behind him. Get me a banana! The little white boy ran into the house and reappeared shortly with a banana. Peel it for me. The little white boy skinned the banana and handed it to his dark master. I saw it now. It was indeed a game. A game I had played as a child. Each boy took his turn every alternate day to be the boss, the other the slave. It had been great fun to me as a youngster. I smiled as I remembered. I looked at the man standing by the gate. He was a white man. I remembered what I had thought yesterday. He, no doubt, I thought to myself, was wondering if the black race is superior to the white. I laughed gently to myself. How silly grown-ups are. 
how clever we are. How wonderfully able we are to impute deep motives to childish actions. This man, I said to myself, will puzzle all day on whether the blacks will eventually rise and rule the world. Because he thinks he sees a little black boy realizing at a tender age his superiority over the white. I will save him his puzzle. I will explain it to him. I went across to him. I know what you're thinking, I said. You're thinking that maybe the black race is superior to the white, because you just saw the little dark youngster on the lawn ordering the little white boy around. Don't think that. It's a game they play. Alternate days, one is boss, the other servant. It's a grand game. I used to play it, and maybe so did you. Yesterday I saw the little white boy bossing the dark one, and I worried all day over the dark boy's realization of his inferiority so young in life. We are silly, we grown-ups, aren't we? The man was surprised at my outburst. He looked at me smiling. I know all about the game, he said. The boys are brothers, my sons. He pointed to a handsome brown woman on the veranda who had just come out to call the children in. That's my wife, he said. I smiled. My spirit laughed within me. This is Jamaica, I said in my heart. This is my country, my people. I looked at the white man. He smiled at me. We'll miss the tram if we don't hurry, he said. Dear children, I think you clearly understood the lesson. Now look at some of the new words which came in our passage. Please note down. Sturdy, strong and healthy. Hagil, reddish or greenish brown. Imperiously, in a manner of expecting people to obey. Bidding, ordering, stride, to walk with long steps. Objectly, without pride. Divine, find out something by guessing. Impute, claim that someone has done something unjustly. Pleasant, happy or satisfaction. Impose, force on someone. Deficiency, a lack or shortage. Eventually, in the end, antonyms, imperiously, helplessly, conscious, unconscious, coarse, soft or smooth, between, among. Other forms of words, pleasant, pleasantly, young, youngster, strong, strength, conscious, consciously, elaborate, elaboration. Submit, submission, explain, explanation. Children, please answer the comprehensive questions given under the passage in your textbook for your clear understanding. Important item, speech. Or drafting a speech or writing a speech. Speech is a 10 marks discourse. The question is asked under section C. Creative writing in paper 2. Test your writing skills. In the examination, you have been asked to write a speech on any of the topic or imagine yourself as someone else and give a speech. Generally, on current issues or recent incidents, national days like Science Day, Children's Day, Sports Day, etc. A speech is meant to convey one's thoughts or opinions, share information with or spread awareness among a large number of people. 
a good speech has clarity of thought and expression accuracy and an unbiased view of issues the aim of speech writing is to convince your audience or pay attention to your subject of discussion present tense is usually used while writing a speech first person i is used while writing a speech speech writing has three parts the first one is introduction the second one main body the third one conclusion in the first part introduction you have to introduce yourself the first thing in any speech is you to write introduce yourself you can introduce yourself according to your audience for example in your school in front of your school staff you may introduce yourself like this respected headmaster or headmistress teachers my dear friends i am mr or miss of your school i am delighted to have this golden opportunity of expressing my views on dash for example you are giving a speech to your classmates your language must be more casual you have already known to them hi everyone most of you know me already my name is my class okay dear children introduction is an opportunity so be creative the second part of the speech what is that body of the speech it is most important now the audience know who you are it's time to make them pay attention you can include the following points when you are writing a speech facts data relevant examples ask questions explain your topic in detail you remember to write each point in separate paragraph the third part of the speech writing is conclusion conclude the topic in one or two lines this is also most important part of the speech writing dear students you must remember thanks the audience at the end of speech writing okay students i think you understood the speech writing if you keep all these points in your mind while writing the speech in your examination you will definitely get 10 out of 10 thank you students